Teens across the city are being targeted by the latest wave of gun violence. Take a look right here. The latest numbers on gun violence from the NYPD show a slight increase in shootings up by 21 from this same time last year. However, that number jumps significantly when broken down by borough. The Bronx now the new hotspot for gun violence. The number of shooting incidents increased by more than 100 for this same time last year. NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea has made it a point to join us on the Pixar More News twice a month to update us on what the department is doing to curb crime. And Commissioner is back with me now. Good to see you. Hey, Dan. Great to be here. So, Commissioner, NYPD announced a 13-year-old, my goodness, has been arrested for shooting another 13-year-old after an argument at Hunts Point Playground in the Bronx. I can't believe we're talking about this young. It seems we're seeing suspects yep. and victims that are younger and younger. The kid now charged with attempted murder at 13, Commissioner. What are you doing to curb the violence among teenagers specifically. Why are we seeing it so young? You know, Dan, last night we opened up a, uh, a new basketball court up in the Bronx in the Castle Hill houses. And, and I was speaking to some community members that live in the development and, and we were saying the exact same conversation that you just brought up. Um, you just shake your head. I mean, it, it's terrible all the way around. A 13 year old, the, the arrest was made yesterday. Uh, I, I believe the 13 year old was processed in family court and released to the back to the mom. Um, you know, we, we have to do better, I think, as a society, certainly. Um, what we're doing on the NYPD side, I mean, I think, you know, Dan, we're, we're, we're pretty good in, in mm -hmm. terms of the violence. Um, but we're trying to get them before they get into the violence. Yeah. And I think that's the story when you look at these young kids and, and giving them opportunities. Uh, working with the youth across the city. That's why I identified it. I mean, going back before COVID, this is something that I think everyone needs to do. Yeah. Um, particularly in some of these hard hit areas. You brought up the idea of, of, of treating him in family court rather than charging as an adult. There's a lot of conversation around that. What's your take? Yeah, it's a hard, con it's a hard conversation, Dan. I'll, I'll throw it back to you. You know, you love when I do this. What do you do with a 13 year old? in this circumstance. It's just there is no right answer. Um, the courts will figure it out and, yeah. and uh, you know, you, you hope that, I mean, you hope that, you know, um, you, you feel for the victim, but you also think about, uh, you know, the, the side of the family with the 13 year old that was pulled the trigger here and, and there are no winners and that's the message. There's no winners with gun violence. So we all have to do more to make sure that these incidents yeah. go on a <clears throat> steep, steep rapid decline. Understood. The Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark, she made such an emotional plea last week to pay attention to what's happening in her borough. Is the department reassigning more resources to the Bronx given that spike in gun violence? We just threw the numbers up, Commissioner. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think your numbers might have been a, a little outdated. Okay. Um, we're certainly we're certainly working hard. I could tell you Chief Kenny Lear does a phenomenal job. Chief Timmy McCormick on the investigative side and all the men and women under them. Dan, when I looked at the numbers this weekend, um, we were down about 2,300 cops. You know, 1,200 taken off the top after, um, you know, uh, the defund movement time, and, and we're down about another 1,100. The good news is we're getting a shot in the arm this week. Mm -hmm. We're hiring about 700. They'll be six months out. We're getting a group out of the academy now. I, I could tell you the people of the city should know that this, this machine, the men and women, and we don't, I don't think we talk about this enough, they're like a, a machine that is running hot at this point. They are working incredibly hard, the cops I'm talking yep. about, and detectives with, you know, at this point, like there's a lot that we're probably spending too much overtime, to be honest, um, because to fill some of these holes, when you think about whether it's Rikers Island that's going on, when you talk about Times Square transit, yeah, the cops of this city are going to do everything possible to keep New Yorkers safe. So the Bronx residents should know that, that you have a, a, a team that's behind the scenes. And when you throw in the prosecutors and when you throw in our federal partners to make sure that we continue to zero in on this small number of people to pick up a gun. But Dan, we had a police involved shooting last week okay. uh, up in Washington Heights where a guy shoots into a crowd with a ghost gun and then he makes bail and he's back on the street. Yeah. Do we want a guy that's shooting into a crowd with a ghost gun back on the street? 
So, you know, that's that's what's behind the scenes. And this is the hamster wheel uh, that we keep talking yeah. about, right? I mean, we, 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 yeah. we, I feel like we talk about this every time you're on. I want to head a little south of Washington Heights now and talk about Harlem. Community leaders there, Commissioner, they say a large number of methadone clinics in the neighborhood are leading to an open-air drug market, which is becoming a public safety issue. So listen here for a second. We see people that could be dead laying on the street, not quite sure what what you know their state is. There's a whole marketplace that is being developed evolved around the methadone clinic. I see these black and brown people who are just dying on the streets. It really, really is painful and hurtful. So how is the NYPD addressing the drug and mental health problems of those that are on the streets right now? When you bring up that topic, Dan, I think of two areas in particular, and there's probably more. Well, actually, I'll give you three. Um, that area, 100%, I think the residents are right. You, you wonder how it got to a point where there's so many clinics in one area. Um, look at the, in the South Bronx, right across a bridge. If you draw a map, it's probably only a couple miles away. In the South Bronx, in the 149th Street area of the Bronx, you see the similar conditions. And we've seen some of those conditions also in, in the midtown, you know, below Port Authority. Right. Uh, I, I think I think we all have to do better here in terms of, uh, you know, no one wants to see this. Right. No one wants people want to see people getting help <clears throat> to have drug addiction, but people shouldn't be laying around on the street. Understood. Uh, and, and I would be in 100 percent agreement with those residents. Uh, I want to pivot right now to the report released last week by the Department of Investigation, which found that Mayor de Blasio misused his NYPD detail. Now, I spoke to the Department of Investigation Commissioner right here on the Pick 7 Morning News. And uh, about this very issue, but it comes down to a very specific question. The Manhattan DA's office now looking into whether or not the head of de Blasio's NYPD security detail, Inspector uh, Howard Redmond, should face charges for destroying his phone and possibly hampering their investigation. Do you have a comment on that specific part of this? No. Or, or what I will say is that the the report came out last week, where where um, we have the report. Um, our Internal Affairs Bureau has been in contact with the Manhattan DA's office, which I think is appropriate, and, and we will cooperate 100 percent with the Manhattan DA's office at this point. And then we'll go uh, wherever this leads us. But currently, Inspector Howard Redmond is still working. 100 percent. Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, now on full duty. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. And lastly, I want to talk about vaccinations. You know we always go here. Where do you stand with vaccinations? How much of the department is now vaccinated? We are, the latest numbers I saw is 69%. I think that number is higher, Dan. It'll probably jump a little bit in, in the next week. And the reason I say that is because we just hired 550 uh, officers yesterday, expected to do another 150 this week. And with the executive order by the mayor, all new employees are vaccinated. So once those records get updated, that in and of itself will, will uh Push yeah. the rate up. And my the, apologies, we just showed her the incorrect number there, but it, as you said, 69%. Uh, so you support 69. a vaccine mandate. Why hasn't one been put into effect? And if it does go into effect, you know, the mayor talking about possibly extending it, would it stretch the department very thin? Uh, well, there's an unknown there to a degree. I think we could handle it. I, you know, I have 100% a, a confidence in, in the people of this agency. They're incredibly resilient. Right now, where it, it Right. Again, about 70 percent. Sixty nine is the actual number. It's probably going to move up. OK. Um, and, and for the other 30 percent, they're getting tested weekly. So that's the system right now. If it came to a different system, we would do what we do with any challenge. We'd meet it head on and we would uh, keep going forward. All right. Commissioner Shea, we're out of time. I appreciate you joining us as always. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks, Dan.